When I was a kid, when I was first really getting into movies, uh, books were a very important part of that cinematic education, that early cinemania, as it were. And one of the most important books, first of all, the most important book I had as a kid, a little kid, was one my father had, and it was called uh, The Talkies, or it might have been called The Pictorial History of the Talkies. And it was just pages and pages of just stills from movies, not posters, but just stills from movies with a, I don't think it had much text in it, in year by year from the, the talkies era. So it, it went, I think the copy we had maybe went up to like say The Godfather or something. And it was all genres of films, mostly in films you would know, but it was just an education of seeing all of these images. And at the time as a kid, it was a world where you wanna watch a movie, uh, you hope it comes on TV. You hope you know about it when it comes on TV and you watch it, you hope you're available to watch it, and nobody else wants to use the TV at the time. Pre-home video, pre-streaming, pre-all that, pre-cable, and uh, as it went on, it, it became much easier to just dial up whatever you wanted as long as it was in print or available somewhere. So down the road, the most important book that came along was this that I'm gonna show you right here. Uh, Leonard Maltin's Movie and Video Guide. This book uh, was, was the dictionary to me. This was like a dictionary for movies, it was like a Bible for movies. He would release this, I think he started in the late 60s when he was really like a teenager putting these books out. And over time, they got thicker and thicker. They got thicker to the degree where they became unwieldy and he used to have to drop titles out so that he could put new titles in. It wasn't written entirely, or at least over time, it wasn't written entirely by Leonard Maltin. He had a staff of people who would do the capsule reviews, but this book means so much to me, you, you, don't even, you don't even know the half of it. So this is the 1993 edition. The, the way it used to work for me, I had a, my best friend's father was into movies too, and he had a whole shelf of, uh, of books in their living room, and it was all books about movies and TV shows. And I'd never seen, I'd never thought that, aside from that talkies book that we had in my house, I never thought that they would do books about movies and TV shows. It's fantastic. I love movies and TV. I can, I mean, I can learn about this stuff. I can find out about what I haven't seen yet. I can see a list of all the episodes of a show to look out for that I might not have seen yet. And I can read about how and why these things came to be. It was very exciting for me. And on the shelf always was a copy of this Leonard Maltin book. And he would buy a new one every year. And he wasn't a completist who was like, I need to have every review in every one of these. He would get rid of them. And because I was, you know, his son's best friend, uh, I would get these every year. So for several years in a row, I would get the new Malton book. And I probably foolishly would toss them too over time. I say foolishly because as I said, they would change from year to year. So if you really wanted to know everything that was reviewed in one of these, you had to have multiple volumes of it. Eventually they became published in much larger formats. Uh, because, you know, it's one of these things where, like the, the dictionaries, the print gets smaller and smaller and the pages get thinner and thinner and there are more and more columns on them to try to work it all in. But uh, the way it worked, I don't know if there's any way this is going to focus, if this is visible at all, but uh, you, it was all alphabetical. It would be alphabetical by film title. Of course, A and the would be at the end. And it would tell you the, the film title, the date, whether the duration, what the rating was for him. Sometimes something would be rated BOMB in all caps and a very brief either synopsis or capsule review. And then at the end, it would say the rating and whether, and in here, in this era, it had a little triangle pointed downward for video and a black circle for Laserdisc. So at the time it was saying what was available on video. So what I would use this for is I would, uh, I eventually went through it. I went through this, I think, cover to cover at one point, and it's all still here, with a little red pen. And if I had seen a movie, I'd put a little dash next to the film title. And if I saw it in the theater, I'd put a little plus. So that was partly a way to just say, man, I've seen a lot of movies, but it was also a way if something would be coming up on TV late at night that I wanted to tape something. TNT, in the early days, TNT was great for movies. TNT, you know, Ted Turner had bought the MGM library, which encompassed a couple of studios at the time, and a certain date range and he would utilize that on TBS which he ran the Superstation out of Atlanta and then TNT which was Turner Network Television he would show a lot of movies he would show movies in the middle of the afternoon he'd show a movie at night and then they'd show movies late night and tr true to TV tradition the late night movies were the most obscure the hardest to find stuff the stuff that was not on video so I would always use this trusty Leonard Malton book and I would look up what was showing late at night that looked interesting to me sometimes the TV guide would give you a synopsis but sometimes it wouldn't it would just say, movie, uh, the, the Tam Lin. You know, what's Tam Lin? And I would get the Malton book and look it up, and I would find out, ooh, that sounds interesting. And, and sometimes I would be like, ooh, that's not on video. I can't rent that anywhere. The only way I'm going to see this is to tape it. So this book was invaluable to me. I've never gotten rid of it. I only have one other copy of this that I found at a dollar store, at a Dollar General in Pennsylvania many, many years later. And might have even been after he stopped publishing them. 
but uh, and it was one from uh, I believe 2013 or 2003. So it was a, it was either a 10 or 20 year difference that I've got those two books. So I figured the newer one covers a lot of the films that were released theatrically after 1993, and 93 covers a lot of the other ones. And who knows what the differences are between the two? But uh, thank you so much, Leonard Malton, for it. this meant so much to me in expanding my knowledge of films. I would look up films and learn about who was in them. I would learn about what they were about. There's I know about a lot of movies still to this day that I've still never seen. I can tell you a lot about them because of things like the Leonard Malton book or haunting video stores and always looking at the covers and knowing what they are. And uh, I still use this to look films up to see if I've seen them. That's the big thing now too, is that checking them off, normally I would never deface a publication, but checking them off was uh, something would come up on TV late at night that I didn't remember if I'd seen it before. And if I looked it up in here and I saw that I had, that would save me from recording it. And, you know, at the time it was blank tapes and you could only fit so much in a blank tape and blank tapes cost money and on, on and on and on. So it saved me from rewatching things I might not have wanted to. I didn't put like ratings for myself in here or anything. It was just more a matter of, I always want to see, and it still is the case for me. I want to see movies I haven't seen before. I watch, I, I rewatch, I've got a million Maybe not technically mathematically accurate. I have a lot. I'd say a ton, but that might not be accurate either. I have a lot of movies on videotape and on various formats and stockpiled because I think I want to watch them again or if I want to watch them again and they're going to be there for me, unlike streaming, which, you know, it's here today, it's gone tomorrow. But uh, I'm always really honestly more interested in seeing something I've never seen before. And we're in such a lucky era of video and home video and physical media releases and streaming that so much is provided to us that is older that you can't, easily you couldn't see in the old days that uh, I'm still always watching old movies I love old movies I love take going back to the past if you watch this YouTube channel you see that most of what I review is older stuff and having this book as a guide to know what that is now yes we have the internet now and yes you can look things up on IMDb and everything but I still love the ability to have this physical thing that I have had since I was probably geez, a teenager that marks off everything I've seen. Yes, I use Letterbox for that now too, but I still take it off in the Malton book because it's cool and it's just, it's a way to look and see really quick. Uh, if the internet goes out, uh, Leonard Malton is there for me. So not a lot of point to this video other than to say, if you can find yourself a copy of the Leonard Malton video guide from any era, from any year, and you love movies like I love movies, it is really, it's something to have in your bedside table. It's something to have in your video room. It's uh, even in the era where it's seemingly the internet and certain websites and phones and all that make uh, physical things uh, obsolete. Uh, I'm never going to get rid of this.